so you want to specialize in women's or children. Hello everyone, my name is Kristen and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a newborn registered nurse. I work in the newborn nursery on the labor and delivery unit. I recently asked y'all what y'all wanted to see next on my channel and y'all want to know how to land a job in the specialties of women's and children's. Some of these examples include labor and delivery, NICU, peds, postpartum nursing. So if you are wondering how you can get a job in one of these specialties after graduation, just go ahead and keep it's one of those cozy days today. It is raining outside. You might hear some thunder in the background. I'm just trying to stay nice and bundled. It is a little bit chilly in here, so don't mind me. I know my hair is a little bit of a disaster, but we're going to get through it today. I also do have a list on my laptop, so I probably will be looking down every once in a while just so to make sure I talk through everything that I wrote out here. It's totally possible to specialize as a new grad nurse. I did get three job offers. One was in the pediatric ICU. Another one was in labor and delivery. And then of course now where I work in the newborn nursery. I promise it can happen. It does just take a little bit of planning and making sure you are implementing a few steps so you can make yourself stand out and be a little bit more of a competitive applicant. My number one biggest tip, and I say this a lot on my channel, is make sure that you one, know yourself, know your worth, make sure that you're in a good headspace beforehand. And of course, be confident. Even as a nursing student where you may not know a lot going into this job, confidence can definitely carry you a long way, help you throughout that interview process, and of course, make you stand out from other applicants. Every single nursing student who is applying with you or anybody who's interviewing with you is also nervous. So just try your best to make yourself stand out by showing a little bit of confidence and just showing a little bit of who you are and your personality. One of the biggest tips you're gonna hear me talk about a lot throughout this video is networking. And most of this networking is super important whenever you are in nursing school. Next tip is when you are in nursing school, if you get a chance and you feel like you have a little bit of free time where you can pick up a job on the side, definitely get a job as either a CNA, a PCT, or get some other type of unit specific job that is in the specialty that you're looking for, whether or not that's labor and delivery, postpartum, or NICU. So for example, you could work on the admissions team. Maybe there's also some sort of administrator position that you can get as well on the unit that won't take up too much of your time that you could do part-time. I've definitely seen some of these positions throughout the different hospitals that I've worked in, so I know that they're out there, but having this type of position while you're in nursing school helps you network, helps you get to know the unit, and of course can help you get the job that you're looking for much easier. And then it's the same thing as getting like a nurse extern position. Some hospitals offer nurse extern positions while you're in nursing school, and basically what it is is it's similar to like a CNA PCT job, but you are essentially a nurse nursing student working as the nurse at the bedside. Of course, there are other nurses and or maybe the nurse unit manager who's still overseeing all of your work. There's still things that you are limited to, but it's nice because these jobs are specifically only for nursing students. So it definitely creates more opportunity for you to apply for a job in this specialty. And like I said, if you get a job as a nurse extern on one of these units, it helps you network and then you have a better chance of getting a job in this specialty later on. Another way that you can get a experience while in nursing school is if your nursing school offers some type of capstone nursing school internship like a clinical role transition ask to be put into the specialty of your choice so for example I had a preceptorship in my nursing school that was around six weeks long where I was placed into an infant specialty care unit which was also known as like a NICU in that area and I was able to get newborn experience that way and of course if I did stay in the area where I went to nursing school, I could have gotten hired on that unit. So those are very three great ways to get experience while you're still in nursing school and you're able to network and be able to get one of these jobs straight out of graduation just because you have already worked on these units. They know how you are. And honestly, they would rather hire you, especially if they know that you have a good work ethic over somebody that has never worked on that unit before. Another tip is volunteering. Sometimes there are volunteer positions in the hospitals that do allow you to get a little bit of experience on these units. Now, because of all that's been happening, I haven't seen too many volunteers on my unit specifically, but I do remember whenever I did get more of like the ethics experience back in the NICU, they did have volunteer positions where you could actually cuddle the babies. So you were essentially like a baby holder 
And I remember I definitely did try to apply to that, but they had no open positions at that time. But that is something that you could also look into. See if there's any volunteer positions in your area that will allow you to get exposure on those units. So then you are able once again to network. You'll see that I'll talk about networking a few times just because that is such an important thing for you to do while you're in nursing school. And of course, when you're out of nursing school to be able to get some of the jobs that you'd like. Another thing you can do while you're still in nursing school is definitely create a good relationship with you and your professor, especially the ones who are your L&D professors or your peds professors. These are people that have had experience in these units before. And honestly, any of your professors might know somebody that works on a specific unit that you were looking to get hired on. I promise they can definitely benefit you in the long run, especially if you're looking for one of these harder residencies to get into. The next tip is apply early and do your research. The reason why I say this is I started applying in my last semester of nursing school in January because I knew I wanted to get a job as soon as I could, as soon as I passed my NCLEX and I had two job offers before I even graduated nursing school. So that was so helpful for me. Now I know everybody isn't wanting to do the same thing that I did and that's totally fine. You can take the time to finish nursing school and then apply. But I think my biggest recommendation when it comes to this, you know when all these nurse residency programs have their deadlines. I had a couple people from my program reach out to me and ask me how I got hired in the units that I did and I told them, well, a lot of the places, at least in the area that we're in, the applications have already closed for the units that you want. So you might have to wait till next application cycle or at least just apply to any hospital that will take new grads in those units. So definitely make sure that you do your research, you figure out when the deadlines are and you make sure to have everything ready before the deadline. You just don't wanna miss a deadline and take away that opportunity, especially if that's the hospital that you really wanna get hired at. And when I mean by apply early, just try your best to submit your application as soon as you can. One of the residency programs that I applied to said that they only interviewed 10 people and the 10 people that they would choose to interview from were out of the first 20 to 25 applications that they did receive. Now I'm not saying that all residency programs are this way, but if it happened to be like one of the ones that I applied to, the earlier that you apply and have everything ready to go, you will be in a much better place than applying later when they might not even look at your application if it's more closer to the application deadline. When it comes to your professors, definitely ask for those recommendation letters if the residency program requires it very, very early because I definitely had to ask some of my professors a couple of times to make sure that they got my letter of recommendation in on time. If you are able to look up these programs a little bit early to kind of see what you need. I highly recommend it so your professors are aware of the deadline and basically what they need to know to be able to fill out the letter of recommendation. This next tip, I kind of don't want to say it, but I feel like I have to say it and I actually just posted a TikTok recently about um, how much I get paid as a BSN nurse and a lot of people talked about how I shouldn't separate associate degree nurses, bachelor's degree nurses, and master's degree nurses because we all take the same boards. Like, yes, I understand that, but where I live, we actually do make a little bit more of a differential. I also feel like, and I don't want y'all to take this the wrong way, but when it comes to some of these residency programs that I applied to, if I didn't have my BSN, I wasn't able to apply to some of these NICU positions. I wasn't able to apply to some of the L&D residency programs that I applied to because where I live, they did require me to have my BSN. Now that's not true of all 50 states and that's not true of every single hospital. Just make sure that you look ahead of time at some of these residency programs because they may require you to have them and I hate to say that, but I'm just saying from my experience, there were some that if you had an associates, they were not even accepting your application. Next tip is to put together a great resume and a good cover letter. And I did create my own resume. It was just helpful for me to be able to organize my resume and I made sure I added in all the information that I wanted to add in and I personalized it to my personality while still making the whole resume clean and legible. I wrote a cover letter 
out for every hospital that I applied to. I took my time to do this and it was because I wanted it to be personalized to that specific hospital and to the specific unit that I was applying to. I wanted to show them that I was taking time learning about their hospital and their unit and how excited I was to even just apply to that unit. I can definitely do a whole separate video on how I made my resume and my cover letter because I feel like these are two very important factors whenever you are going through job interviews. So let me know if you would like that video. For the next one, please, please, please do not settle when the nurse recruiters tell you that they do not hire new grads in labor and delivery, NICU, PEDS, and postpartum. I had one hospital system try to do this to me. It even said on their website for their nurse residency program that they did hire a new grad in those positions, but they would not allow me to interview in those positions. So I just decided myself, I did not want to interview at that hospital. And look, I still got three job offers from three different hospitals in those units. You just have to keep looking and keep searching for these jobs because I promise they are out there. And when you hear a nurse recruiter try to knock you down saying, look, we don't hire new grads there. You have to start in med surge or you have to start here. You have to start there. Don't listen to them. I promise, I promise, I promise from personal experience, I had that happen to me. I did not listen and look where I am now. For my next tip, I would recommend to apply anywhere you are able to. So that means apply to every hospital in your city. If you're looking and wanting to relocate, maybe apply to a few different hospitals around the US. This will definitely maximize your options because these new grad positions are very heavily sought out. So if you try your best to apply to as many residency programs or units as you can, then you will maximize your options and hopefully you'll get not just one, but a few job offers back as well. For my next tip, get ready for your interviews. Do everything that you can to research that hospital, get a little bit of background knowledge, learn about the unit, see how many beds they have, see what type of communities they might cater to. And of course, go on Google and look up like the most common interview questions, write out your responses, practice those responses, and come up with a list of questions that you wanna ask the unit, especially to learn about the work environment. It's important that not only you apply to a unit you wanna work at, but you also know about the work environment because a more positive work environment, of course, is gonna help you thrive as a new grad. I promise a negative work environment is not very fun to work in and it can really make or break your first job. Lastly, when it comes to interviews, do your best to dress for success. Go in something that makes you feel confident. You wanna feel confident on your interview day. When you dress in something that makes you feel comfortable, you're gonna be more confident and more excited to be at your interview and try your best to have a positive attitude whenever you are going through these interviews. Look, I'm telling you now, the interview process is a little bit nerve wracking. You're gonna be a little anxious, but definitely try to keep hyping yourself up. And I'm gonna go back to the point of use your confidence to try to sell yourself because you are competing against other new grads. In these interviews, talk about your strengths and of course, talk about any experience that you might have that will set you apart from any of the other new grads that are applying to these positions as well. Well, uh, that is all that I have for you in today's video. I hope that these tips help you navigate your way through on figuring out how to apply to different specialties in women's and children. Feel free to comment any questions, suggestions, anything you have down below. I'm always here wishing you luck on your nursing journey.